So welcome back to the next part of our classroom learning. I have switched to a different classroom here in a different account and I've just got some um, sample students and sample classes set up here just to give you a bit of an idea about how this looks once it's got some things in it uh, since our last one was an empty classroom. So you can see on the stream in this one there's a bit of a discussion going on, there's been some conversations. So that's a great example of how the stream gets worked. You can pack those comments up if you don't need to see them all. But let's pop into the classwork page for a second and you'll see here is the classwork page once it starts to get populated with some different uh, topics and sections. Uh, again, you can organise these any way you like. If you'd like to swap the order of things, you can simply pick them up and move them around. Uh, you can take uh, tasks or topics and move either of them around. So you can organise this page any way you like. Let's look at how we use two really great features inside Classroom. One is called Rubrics and the other is called an Originality Check. And you'd use these when you're setting an assignment for students. So let's look at how we do this. I'm going to go into one that's already made for me. So you can see I've got here a creative writing task that's already been given out. But let's pop in and see what this looks like. So this task has been assigned to students in the class. One's already been marked. Uh, but if I go and actually look at how this was set up by clicking on the edit button here, you can see that when this was set up, it had two things attached to it. One was a rubric. And the other was this check for plagiarism here. Now because this is a writing task, this is, lends itself really well to an originality check to see if students have been taking things from the internet or just borrowing things from places that aren't theirs uh, and using it in their work. So we can check for that. And we can also put a rubric so students know exactly what it is we're looking for when we grade this assignment. Now I want to show you a completed rubric so you get an idea about what they look like. And then we'll talk about how you make one. So I'm just going to click this button here that says rubric. And you can see this is an example of the rubric we've used for this particular task. These can look like anything you like. But the key idea of a rubric is you have a number of categories. So in this case, it's persuasion, how persuasive were the students, originality, how original was their writing, and finally their spelling and grammar. Uh, how well was it written? So you can have different categories and within each of those categories you have a performance descriptor ranging from you know doing really really well to doing fairly basic work. Uh, in this example I've ranged it from elementary, developing, substantial and advanced. You can use whatever terms you like for that. You can assign a number of points or you can have no points. Um, a little research now says that it's better to not have points in a rubric. Uh, simply give students a quality guide without necessarily re rewarding them with points. Up to you how you do that, of course. Uh, but this is what a rubric would look like. This particular one is fairly um, balanced in that each one of these categories has four uh, levels to it. You don't have to have the same number of levels in each category if you don't want. You can have more in one and less in another. Uh, it's very flexible the way you set this up. So that's an example of what a rubric would look like. Let's just go out then to uh, see how we would set this up. So I'm going to close this assignment and go into the create option here and create a brand new assignment. And I'll just call this um, writing task two. Okay. And I could write my description. You should definitely write a description, by the way. Uh, but for the sake of time, I won't put anything in there now, but you should. Uh, and of course, you can attach whatever you want to it, like I showed you in the last video. But let's come over here to Rubric. When I click the Rubric button, it gives me three options for how I can attach a Rubric. One is to create one from scratch. So if I don't have a Rubric that's suitable, I can click the Create button and simply create it from uh, the categories that I have in my head. Or I can reuse an existing one. So maybe I've got a Rubric from a previous writing task that I can reuse. That would be pretty handy if I could just reuse that without making it again. Or I can actually import it from a Google Sheet if I have it stored in a Google Sheet somewhere. Um, I would suggest to you probably the, the easiest way is to reuse an existing one. So let's just look at that. I'll click on Reuse Rubric and it will go and look for me in all of my classrooms. So I, all of my different classrooms are here. So I might know that I used one before in this demonstration class and uh, it's going to look through and find these are the ones I've got in there. Um, and it's this maybe this persuasive writing task here that I had and I can click select and it will attach that rubric for me. If I click on it now, it will show me that rubric. That's the one I was showing you before. Okay, so you reuse an existing one really easy. Let's look at how you create one from scratch though. I'll delete that. 
and now I'll click on that button again and say this time let's create a rubric from scratch. So it opens this rubric creation uh, page here. So let's say one of our categories is um, uh, persuasion. Um, persuasion is one of the categories and I write uh, how persuasive was the student into a point of view, right? So whatever you want to write there. Okay, now you can put in here this. So my, my basic level, and I might call it basic, right? Or fundamental or whatever you want to call it. Okay, you can put that in there and then write the description. Student has used only uh, basic words and not a lot of connecting ideas. Okay, so you Again, you make this up to however you want your rubric to look. Once you've added in that, you can then add the next level. So the next level might be worth two points and it's called um, developing and you have a description of what the developing level might look like and so on. And you can keep adding different criteria, different um, uh, quality levels for this particular criteria. And then you can add more criteria by clicking here and this might be uh, originality and you write what the description is and then you put all your points descriptors here and like I said you can have a different number oh, I've got to put a title in there originality like so um, you can have a different number so maybe I only want uh, two descriptors for that one uh, and so on so you can keep adding criteria and adding descriptions if you decide you don't want the point values for whatever reason, you can come up here and turn off the point values uh, and it will get rid of them and just give you the descriptions only. So that's how you create a rubric. Uh, it is, I think, fairly straightforward. Uh, I won't save this because uh, it's not completed, obviously, but let me discard that. And so, yeah, so this first way is create from scratch. Second way is to reuse an existing rubric. And the third way you can actually import from Sheets and I think I could probably have an example here. If I go in here and import, uh, and I look in my, I think I've got them in here somewhere. It's probably in here, and it's probably in um, rubric imports here. I actually have some in here. You can see I actually have a number of spreadsheets in here already that are set up as rubrics. There is a fairly specific format for these spreadsheets. Uh, so you can't just use any old spreadsheet and just import it in it has to be structured in a certain way but let's just take this multimedia project for example click on add it imports and this is what that particular rubric looks like this one has a few other different levels and things in it um, but if I'm happy with that I can click the save button and it will uh, I think sorted order Okay, it's giving me some small error there. Obviously, I need to go back and revisit that. But you get the idea. You can import them in from an existing spreadsheet uh, and they'll come straight in. So uh, that is the three ways you can use a rubric. When it comes to grading a piece of student work, let me just exit out of here and try and find one that I've already done. So this student here has already been marked. And you can see that when I've graded this student's work, it has brought up, let me move myself out of the way here, you can see as I'm grading the assignment here, it's actually brought up the rubric. And so as I'm looking here, I can unpack that and, and say, well, I thought this was a substantial. Let's say I thought it was advanced. I click on advanced. You'll notice the point values change automatically. Uh, if I go to a lower value, it changes. So the rubric that you give to the students, not only does it guide the students in knowing what they are supposed to produce and what you're expecting from them and the quality level that you're looking for, but when it comes time for you to grade the work, it's also very useful because it puts the rubric in front of you. So you can look at the student work over here, come over here and say, oh, I think it was a substantial level for that. Scroll down, how original was the student work? Well, you can make a rating on that. We'll talk about originality reports in a moment. And finally, you can come down to under here. And as you uh, make these various judgments on the student's work, it will automatically change the grading for you and create the calculation of the student grade. Uh, and you might have noticed down the bottom, I can also need, uh, I can also leave comments directly to the student in this private comments section as well. So that's just how rubrics are integrated into Google Classroom. Super useful tool. In the next short video, we'll look at the originality reports and how you check for originality.